Hello everybody, my name is Nick McPhee and this is going to be the first of a pair of videos uh, demonstrating how to, in this video, fork a repository, a repo on GitHub, clone that repo onto your local machine so that it's ready to be used. In the second re uh, video, I'm going to take that same repository which has got a set of tests using a testing tool called BATS and use that to drive the development of a simple shell script using test-driven develop development style programming in Bash. So we're going to start, like I said, in this video with cloning a repo, uh, forking a repo and then cloning it. Uh, this is designed somewhat specifically for a lab context at the University of Minnesota Morris, where I teach, but the basic techniques of forking and cloning uh, and then doing the, the shell script programming in the second video uh, should hold true for pretty much everybody. Now one thing that is a little different is the interface here will look a little different. This is not the GitHub installation at github.com that you might be used to. This is the GitHub installation at the University of Minnesota Morris uh, and so the user interface looks a little different but it's essentially the same thing. And this is uh, an instance of the repository that we want to work with, uh, that one of my students has a copy set up uh, so that I can fork it, because I can't fork for myself. Uh, you would normally, as a student, be forking a repository set up by the instructor of the course. And presumably, the instructor would provide a link to that repository as part of the assignment. So we're going to assume that this is the repository that we need to fork and work with. Now when we're do working with GitHub, there are several copies of the same repository, the same collection of files that we need to care about. They're sort of the master repository that belongs to the instructor. We're pretending that that's the repository we're looking at right now. Then there's your fork of that, which is a copy of the repository on GitHub. So it's you've just copied on the server, made a copy of the instructor's materials, and you've made a copy for yourself on GitHub, but it's still on GitHub. It's not on a machine where you can get at it. And so once we've forked, made the copy on GitHub, we'll need to clone, which is to make the copy onto the machine that we're using. So I'm gonna start with uh, the forking. So every project has a fork uh, button up here on the top right. Um, and that's all we need to do to fork the repository. And if we hover over it, it GitHub tells us that we're going to fork our own copy, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to click that button. And uh, in this case, because I'm a member of several organizations, it's asking me which one I want to fork this into. I'm going to fork this into my own home organization. If you only have yourself, which is probably true for most students, um, I don't even think you'll get this. Um, but if you do, just choose yourself, whatever your own standard uh, account is uh, on GitHub. So I'm going to click myself, and GitHub tells me, hey, I'm forking this thing. It should only take a little while. We get the cute little GIF. Now here, this is my for copy. So this is in my home directory. And as it says here, it's forked from uh, Yuting's copy, which is where I'm starting from. So this is now my copy on GitHub. Any changes I made to make to this copy will be entirely independent of changes made to the master copy or any other fork of the copy. So this is mine to do with as I see fit and anything that happens here will not have any effect on anybody else. Now, if you're using GitHub in a lab setting, as we often do, one of the things you'll often need to do is add collaborators. So if there's a team that's working on a project, only one of you needs to fork the repository. Only one person needs to do what I just did, but that person needs to make sure to add anyone else on the team as a collaborator. So if you go to the settings link here and go to the collaborators tab here, oh, let's 
going to make sure that I really am me because it doesn't want random people adding themselves as collaborators on projects. I know I do not want Google to remember that. Uh, and so here, because I just forked this, it doesn't have any collaborators. I could uh, add a collaborator if I wanted to. Um, so if you have collaborators you need to add to your project because there's two or three or four of you, six of you working on a team, whoever first forks the project needs to make sure they add all those other people as a collaborator. So I'll add Peter as a collaborator, boom. So now I have a collaborator on the project and I could add as many as I need to here. So I forked the project. So I have a copy on GitHub. I've modified my copy so that it has whoever I need as collaborators. Now at this point, I am ready to copy the repository to my local machine so that I can do work on it. So I'm going to go back to the sort of main page of my copy, not the master copy, but my copy. So I'm going to click here. And this clone or download button gives me the URL I need in order to make a local copy on the machine that I'm working on. So I'm going to clone with HTTPS, uh, which is the default. And then so there's this URL here. I could either select and copy that or I can click this copy to clipboard. Um, once I have that URL, I'm going to go to a terminal window. I'm going to assume here that you've gone to some directory where it makes sense for you to have a copy of this project. If you're a student in a course, you might make a directory for the course uh, and then um, in that have all of the repositories for that course or you might choose to break it up further and have subdirectories in the course. I'm just going to put it here in this directory that I've called screencast. So if I say git clone and then I paste in that URL. So this is this is the URL that I got from over here. So if I do that and hit return, um, it's going to go ahead and clone uh, that project. Now it wants me to log in to confirm that I have rights to this repository. Um, whether it asks you to log in may depend somewhat on your setup, but if you're one of our Mora students uh, cloning a repository from the University of Minnesota um, GitHub installation, it will definitely ask you uh, to log in. Um, and assuming that everything was okay, then you get some information like this saying that it is um, collected the objects, the get objects it needs, and has downloaded them. And if we do an ls, there is now a git bats demo uh, that was not there before. I should have shown you that before I cloned, but sorry about that. And that is going to be, if we go into git bats demo, that is going to be the set of files that we see over here in the web browser. So there's a directory test data, which is this blue test data here, a license, a readme, and a bat test.sh, license, readme, and bats test.sh. Okay. Um, and I should say that all of this is described in some gory detail here in the readme for the project. So you can actually be following along at home or come back and uh, read through this if you find reading to be more helpful than the video or you just want to look something up later on. Um, all the information that I cover in this and the following video should be here. So, so we now have our copy of the repository and at this point we are in fact ready to start solving the problem. Um, in the next video we'll walk through that. We'll also show you the basics of um, committing uh, and pushing. Let me make one small 
do one small example of committing and pushing here um, in the sort of get video, uh, but we'll see it in more detail when we actually solve the problem in the next video. So for example, I could decide that I want to modify um, uh, the bats test.sh file. Um, so I'm going to start up Emacs on that. You could use Vim or whatever command line editor makes you happy, or in fact, a non command line editor. There's nothing special about using a command line editor here, although. Um, if you've not mastered a command line editor, I would highly recommend that you do so uh, because it's a very useful skill and you don't always have um, a windowing environment to save you. So I'm going to edit the um, uh, test script here. We don't need to talk about that here. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next video, uh, but I'm going to uh, include my name. Uh, and a date uh, uh, and my institution division of science and mathematics uh, I can't spell uh, University of Minnesota Morris okay so now I've added that information now at this point this change is in my local copy of everything so it will not be reflected in the web version either mine or the master uh, but I want to save this and make it available here in at least my web version so that any collaborators that I have on the project have access to it my instructor has access to it in case they want to like say grade my work um, I want to have access to it in the future, perhaps on a different machine. So I want to save this information, this change, and push it up to GitHub so uh, it's available to other people. Uh, if I do get status, it tells me that my branch is up to date with Origin Master. Uh, what that means is that I have everything that's on Origin, which in this case is the GitHub copy. Um, so there's nothing there that I need to bring down, but that there is a modified file here that hasn't been committed. And so I need to commit that file. So I need to do a couple of things. I need to first use git add to say, hey, I do actually want to add this change. And then I'm going to have to use git commit to push to commit that change. Um, and if I want to see what I've actually changed, I could use git diff bats test.sh and it shows me with these plus signs and the green that I added these lines. That the other the lines around it are just there for context, but these lines are what I added to that file. And I can say, all oh, right, I added my name and affiliation and date. So yeah, I do want to add that. So I say get add, oops, uh, bats tests. But now if I do get status, it tells me that there are changes to be committed. And so if I want to, so now I can say get commit, and it's going to throw me into an editor. And which editor you go into is going to depend on your configuration. I'm set up to go into Emacs. Um, by default, I think you'll go into Vim in most configurations. Um, so another reason why you probably want to teach yourself at least the basics of either Emacs or Vim. Uh, and as it says here, I need to enter a commit message uh, and save this file. So I'm going to say I added my name affiliation and date to the test uh, to the bats test file and then I'm going to save that and then I'm going to exit and it says hey I did a commit one file was changed with five lines inserted it shows me my commit message and now at this point I've committed 
to the copy on my local machine. I have not yet made any differences here. So if I reload this page, nothing has actually changed here. Um, I'm still in the same place that I was before, and I have to look at the contents of BAT's test. My signature information, which is I put right here uh, between these two paragraphs, it's not there yet. So what I have to do is push this change from my local machine up to uh, the GitHub installation. So I need to say git push. Boom. And it gives me some messages about some things that are changing. We're going to ignore that. Uh, down here at the bottom, it says, hey, you need to like give me your uh, name and, your, and password. So I once again need to tell it my name. Then I need to type my password. And when that succeeds, it says, hey, I wrote those things up um, and everything seems to be good. So at this point, if I do get status, it says, hey, I'm all up to date. Everything's good. And if I come over here and I read this page, my latest commit is I added my name, affiliation, and date to the BATS test file. That's the commit we just made. Um, and if we look at the BATS test file, we'll find that lo and behold there is my affiliation uh, and if we come back here and actually click on the commit it'll show us in github that there was one change file with five added lines and no deleted lines it shows us the commit message and it shows us the actual uh, commit um, what I actually changed so the green tells me that I inserted these as well as these pluses um, and so it shows me that I added my name and affiliation. Okay, so there is the basic uh, steps. If someone else had made a change and we needed to get a copy of it, git pull would bring changes from the GitHub repository down to our copy. At the moment, nothing's going to happen if I do that because... Um, Nobody has made any changes. And so it says, hey, look, I checked it. Everything's up to date. You're, you're all good. You don't need to worry about it. Um, so there's the basics of forking, cloning, committing, pushing, and pulling. Um, and that, once you only fork once at the beginning. You typically only clone once when you first start working on a project. Um, although there can be reasons occasionally to want a second copy of a project and you might clone it, make a clone somewhere else just to try something and then get rid of it. Um, although branches are often a better way to deal with that. Um, once you've got your copy cloned, then you'll work, commit, push, pull other people's changes, work, commit, push, and that'll be the work cycle that you'll go through. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'll stop here, and then in the next video, we'll go through and actually try to solve this problem. So thank you very much.